Um, so I think we all, we all hear it on the media and we're hearing talk about the increasing number of women who are in the military these days. Um, and those numbers are estimated to be about 10 to 20 percent of active duty military are now women. Um, and so I think we see that in the media. We're also starting to see that in our clinical practice, even in the cancer world. And the women that are walking through our doors, they tend to be a bit younger than the men we take care of. They also tend to be more ethnically diverse. So they're, they're really a different population than the elderly man we're used to seeing. Um, and because of that, the VA has made priority to try to uh, create women-specific care. Um, yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> there's a recent study that showed that there's been about a 50% increase in the number of women seen in the primary care clinics. And there's a, a source book that details women's data from 2000 to 2010 that shows the number of women inside the VHA has doubled. It's almost about 320,000 women now. So doubling of women in a decade. That's a big change in our demographic. And we know that women veterans are different than men. Aside from the things we know, the way that women are different, they tend to have more mental health problems. Uh, they tend to be seen more often in the clinic, and they tend to be more uh, likely to be service-connected. So rurality in the VA, which is the other thing we're looking at, so 40% of veterans are considered rural, whereas only 16% of the general population is rural. So we, we all know, I think in our practice, we have, a special, uh, we have a special need for our patients to take care of them from far away, where VAs maybe are not close to them. And this is a particular concern for breast cancer, because you need people that are doing this often and thinking about this often. So surgeons that do a lot of breast surgery, pathologists, radiation oncologists, genetic counselors, lymphedema specialists, things that are very specific. And the question and the thing that we uh, were exploring was do rural women, are they getting the specialty care? Are they getting the same treatments? So this is uh, the same data. So this is data from the VACCR, which is the Central Cancer Registry. So this is all women diagnosed. So these are incident cases of breast cancer from 1995 to 2012. And you can see the numbers go straight up. So about three and a half times as many in about a 17-year period, which is, I think, what we are all knowing anecdotally. Interestingly, the numbers of, of black women has also increased a lot in that time period. So they represent about 25% of the patients we take care of, which is a few percentage points higher than the general population. And this graphic just shows the age distribution of the women with breast cancer. So there's been a really rapid increase in women from ages 50 to 69. You know, we, we, I, I feel like there's probably two reasons to explain that. One is mammography, right? It starts at age 50 or 40, depending on what system you're in. But also, that's the, uh, that's the big spike in women. That's the age group at which there's an increase in women in the VA. So the way that we uh, decided to look at this question of rural versus urban. So we got all the women with breast cancer in the VACCR, so that's from 95 to 2012. And we looked at just early stage breast cancer, so stages one to three. And we, um, you actually get rural and urban classification through the VACCR, but we used the RUCA coding, which has is, is been used by the University of Washington. It's the most widely utilized way to classify rural and urban status. So they use population density, but they also use the commuting patterns of the women in that area. There's 33 separate categories. We collated it into three categories, so urban, large rural, and small rural. Uh, we, use, we analyze the data in Stata via Vinci. Thank you to any of the Vinci people here. And our specific questions are, are there differences between uh, urban women and rural women? Are their demographics different? Do, are the breast cancers that they get different? The, of course, the question is, do rural women present at a later stage, which has been seen in other studies? And then importantly, are we treating these women the same? Are they receiving the same kinds of adjuvant therapies and, and surgeries? So we use uh, various different kinds of regression analyses to answer the demographic and breast cancer questions. And when looking at treatment patterns, we controlled for all of the things that we thought would go into the decisions around making treatments. So age of the woman, year of diagnosis, ethnicity, ethnicity, tumor size, tumor grade, lymph node status, and ER status. So we didn't have HER2 status because it wasn't within the VACCR in this time period. But. So our results uh, that 
3,192 women were classified as urban. That was almost 80% of the population we looked at. And about equal parts, 432 and 410 were large rural and small rural. And that actually was pretty typical for the general population according to Ruka's uh, reference data. So we looked at the change. So did women become more rural or more urban over time from 95 to 2012? And they did not. So those numbers stayed pretty stable over time. And we also looked at are women are older or younger depending on where they live, and those numbers were the same too. So, uh, however, the ethnicity of the women in these regions was, was really different. So in urban areas, 69% of the women were white, almost a quarter, 24% of those women were black, whereas in the small rural areas, 90% of women were white and 6% of women are black. And that's pretty representative of the general population, but worth noting. Um, and when we looked at the tumor characteristics, so things that go into tumor staging, grade, ER status, they were actually the same between rural and urban women. So that's a, an important uh, thing to highlight, I think, because previous studies have shown that rural women tend to present at later stages. Um, so I think, you know, we can make up why that is, but I know that the VA has placed a high priority in women getting mammograms regardless of where they live, and if they live too far, they send them outside of the VA to get care. So I think that's a really good thing. So there's the, the thing we were really looking at, which was the treatment patterns. So this slide shows surgery and then the type of lymph node biopsy women received. And the statistics on the right are comparing urban and small rural women. So we compared the two categories that were the furthest apart. And interestingly, women, women from small rural regions were more likely to receive a mastectomy when you just looked at the numbers blankly, but when you controlled for all the factors, so age, ethnicity, and all the things about their cancer, they actually received equal rates of mastectomy and breast conservation therapy, or lumpectomy. So that's a good thing. Again, we don't want women to be opting for mastectomy because they live far away because they can't drive for radiation. So that's, that's what that number means to me. Interestingly though, so when you look at sentinel lymph node biopsy compared to getting no biopsy whatsoever, so again this is urban compared to small women, small rural women, women from urban regions were actually less likely to get any kind of biopsy um, and women from small rural regions were more likely to get a sentinel lymph node biopsy. That is just a surprising finding to me <laughs> and I think it probably deserves a little more scrutiny as to where the data came from and, and maybe the referral patterns in those areas. So, but importantly, there was no difference in, in rates of axillary, load, axillary lymph node dissection and sentinel lymph node dissection, depending on where you lived. And we all know that the, the axilla has been this, you know, controversial migrating topic for the last couple of decades. It continues to be. So it doesn't surprise me that there are some differences there. So we looked at other adjuvant therapies that we do for breast cancer. So radiation, chemotherapy, and hormone therapy. And when comparing urban women to small rural women, there were no differences, <clears throat> which is a good thing. So I don't, the, the statistics is not, is not represented here, but when we did these numbers, we also compared urban women to large rural women. Um, and we actually found that the rates of receipt of adjuvant chemotherapy for women in the large rural area were higher. So those women were more likely to receive chemotherapy. Again, something we shouldn't be seeing. And so it just raised questions to me, um, you know, about where are these women receiving the care? Are these like women more likely to be going outside of the VA and more likely to get chemotherapy? Or is there some reporting difference coming from the cancer registries? But um, so women in large rural areas were more likely to get adjuvant chemotherapy. So in summary, women from rural regions were more likely Sorry, <clears throat> women from rural regions were likely to be the same age, but were much more likely to be white women. Importantly, the characteristics of their breast cancers um, were the same, regardless of what region they were coming from. And the rates of mastectomy were initially higher in the small rural women, but when you control for all the factors, the rates of, of surgery, type of surgery, are, are the same. Uh, women in urban regions were less likely to receive any kind of lymph node biopsy. Um, compared to small rural regions where they receive more sentinel lymph nodes. And then women in large rural regions were more likely to get adjuvant chemotherapy. So those last two findings are uh, what are intriguing and I think take a little further exploration. 
So some of the limitations of this data, the RUCA coding that we used um, was based on the 2000 census. So the women from 95 to 2000, maybe their rural urban status wasn't you know, coded as perfectly as the women going forward. The second thing is that data in the VACCR does, doesn't specify two things that I think are important. It doesn't specify how, why is that woman inside the VA. So is she inside the VHA because she's a veteran or because she has veteran benefits from some other re reason? And in women, that's a really important question because about 50% of the women inside the VHA are not veterans. They're a, a federal employee or they have a spouse, spousal benefit. So that's an important question. The second question I think is really important is where are the women being treated? So are we taking care of them inside the VA? Are we giving them surgery, chemo inside? Or are we sending them out to specialists on the outside? And those are questions we are going to further explore. So we're going to explore that through CDW and Vinci data, which you guys have been hearing about. So we have the numbers. We haven't been crunching them, but there are Interestingly, so if you just go by ICD code, there are over 20, 21,000 women who have an ICD code of breast cancer inside the VA. So that's from 2000 to present. And that's probably about right. If we say there's 315,000 women, we know the rates of breast cancer are about 12%. So my suspicion is that we're taking care of a really large population of breast cancer survivors. And you know, are, we, are we paying attention to that? Are we, are we taking care of them? <clears throat> and then, like I've talked about, the two other important things are to understand where the women are getting their care and are there differences in outcomes because of that. So this is a group of people that helped me think about this and write this paper. Uh, Dr. Sweeney, who's a uh, breast cancer epidemiologist. Dr. Bies, who's a fabulous mentor and clinical breast cancer doctor. Um, and Dr. Eliezer, our chief of medicine, who's been really supportive. And Dr. Hawani, my partner in crime, is here today somewhere. But. And then, of course, all the women uh, veteran or not, who are allowing us to take care of them in the VA with their breast cancer. So 